Hey guys, this is Swordfish. There's been a bit of a sheep explosion in my base. There's a sheep there. There's a sheep there. There's also a mushroom, which I'll talk about later. But most importantly, off in the distance, that's Dinnerbone. Dinnerbone the sheep decided that, I guess, he liked my company so much that he wanted to, um, wanted to come back and visit. And that's not, um, not necessarily acceptable. He could fall in a... There's caves over here. Dinnerbone. What are you doing? You crazy sheep. Maybe the, um... The trail of blood. He hit his head a little too hard and he got a little wacky. So, let me bring you back to where you belong. You silly, silly goose. I know the troll cave is scary. We're gonna have to walk past it. It'll be fine. Um, let me just... Head on back to Trevor, and I'll put you in a wall this time instead of lead you up to a sign, because leads seem to be broken. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that, but um, leads don't really work. They break at some point. Just don't look. Don't look. Don't look down. Don't look down. Let's just go over the bridge. That's right, over the bridge. Leads seem to be disappearing. A lot of... Oh, no. A lot of people have been having issues with their leaded up mobs and, and friends uh, vanishing. Dinnerbone the Sheep being one of them. So, hopefully that gets fixed. And in the meantime, I'm going to have to put him in a box. This is going to have to do for now. Unfortunately, he won't stay leaded up to anything, so... Um, he's in a little cage. I, I made it to... Uh, I made it spacious so he can breathe and stretch his legs out on the top side. And so Clannelwood can see why there's this dirt stuff in his, uh, in his town square. But, uh, stay put! You crazy little sheep! What's wrong with you? It's a nice place here! One last wait. Is Clannelwood doing something to you that I should know about? No? Okay, cool. That's good. Okay, good. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to... That's good, okay. Yeah, you like it here, so stay. Stay put. Well, I guess Pix decided he was tired of me going to his base to show off his builds. And he just, uh, he'd come to me and let me show off his builds without having to go anywhere. Awfully nice of you, Pix. It's a big red mushroom. Spawn is finally extending out further towards Circle Square. We have a new building. Oh, it's on fire! No, it's not. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, Pix decided that he was going to build a fire station. That's my fire truck noise. That was really bad. First of all, this is an awesome banner for the fire department. It's so, like, smoldery and hot. Delightful. This is his amazing fire truck. Got our grill covered in bugs. Headlights... Wheels, a uh, little hop up to get inside. Is there a door? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mirrors, back mirrors. Let's get in the door. No, come on. Here we go. Oh, the steering wheel or speedometer and the other controlometer and this probably <laughs> this probably actually opens the grill. Um. Oh, and then there's a back. This is so cool. So, you know, wheels and, and there's a ladder so you can climb up top with a hose, I guess. And then, um, ouchies. And then we got our taillights and our back of the truck, which are some water buckets and some splash potions of fire resistance, which is exactly the thing a fire department should carry. Coat hooks. It's awesome. I love it. Biran created um, the official fireman's uniform of DV, so you're ready to go get the fire? Here. Whoa. Push button for uniform. Oh, it's not a dispenser, it's a rotator. <clears throat> so if you need a uni fire department uniform, I assume these are... Okay, wait, how do I get it? Without breaking the... Oh, I think you... Yeah, okay, let's see. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
Yep, f- uh, fire resistance and and respiration and unbreaking feather falling. Awesome, it's their fireman suit. I look like I do. Hey, I'm ready to go save the fire. Wait, there's a fire on the roof. Let's let's go take care of the fire on the roof. Wait, let's do it here. Up the stairs. This is probably the fireman's lounge. These look like beds or something. Another coat hook. The pole where you can slide on down. Um, which is super cool. And then here's a fire. It's an example fire. This is what fire looks like. In case you're a fireman without seeing fire. And um, flint and steel use responsibly to relight the example fire in case you put it out. Maybe we should put out the example fire just as a demo. Here. Let's put out the fire. There we go. Well done. That's how you put out a fire. And then... Whoa. It's, uh... Relighted for future students. Awesome. This is really... I really like this a lot. It's a really fun... Really fun build. It's, like, kind of useful with the fire resistance and the water buckets, and we have had problems with lightning strikes, lighting things on fire. Um... But also, it's adorable. <laughs> and I love things that are adorable. So let's slide down the pole. Boing. Oh, actually, this is... These are slime blocks. So if you sl if you land if you do it right, let me do it right. Is this labeled? Starting fire, stopping fire starts with you. This is the fire axe. Excellent. All right, wait. I want to land. I want to. I want to slide down the pole effectively. Yeah. All right. Now I'm ready to go. Save the server. I forgot to put the uniform back. That's okay. There's another new build in spawn, although you'd never know it. Perhaps, guys, you should label your things. What's this? What's this? A hole into the ground. What's this? There's stairs they're going down. Oh, that was good. So, we've got a staircase. What does the staircase lead to? Well, hello. What are? Th what is this? Is that a creeper? Sure looks like it. Yup. That's not what it's supposed to be. And a spider. Oh, great. So, Pix and and um, Kane built a slime farm. They used some kind of, like, tool thing to um, determine wh what chunks slimes could spawn in. And there they are. Oh, and they are taking... I was... Awesome. They weren't sure how well it worked, but it seems to be working. Um... So they use some kind of tool to determine... Well, maybe it's not working that well. The big guys are stuck. Or they're not taking damage. Well, anyway, it uses some kind of tool to determine... Oh, maybe I screwed it up. Let me just stand here and see if they... Um... Alright, it's worked a little bit. There's four slime balls. Um, they determined what chunks slimes would spawn in. And then, let me get him out of here. And then uh, built a bunch of spawning pads and this, like, water trap system that slides them over there and somehow suffocates them. Either it drowns them in the water, I guess. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but it seems to be working because there were some slime blocks. And that other one is gone now, so let me see if he, uh... Yep, there's a couple more. Cool. Cool. I guess a drown... It seems to be a drowning system. That seems to be how it works. Let me just kill this guy, though. Yeah, it, like, sucks them in here and drowns them. I'll give it my own little... Of course, I have a fortune sword, so this is gonna be... Or a looting sword, so this is gonna be way more profitable for me. But, um... I guess, in theory, this is an AFK thing. Interesting, they're just floating there. So, you come here, you hang out, you wait for the slimes, or you just come down, because I think it's in spawn chunks, so you just come on down. Come on down to the slime farm and get sticky. Um, ooh. And uh, collect whatever balls have accumulated. So, I've decided that finally, after saying for many, many, many episodes, I'm going to do something with this dock. I'm going to do something with the dock. With this dock. It's sponsored by Swordfish's Bait and Tackle. I'm going to take these signs down, finally. Because, um... They're, uh... Or maybe not all of them. Well, if, let me fix this, first of all. 
and explain what I'm gonna do. So, I was thinking of building like an AFK fishing shack because those are kind of popular um, and interesting and, and really useful, but they rely on you using some kind of like script or macro to like click, 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 and I'm not, I don't like that. I don't like having to do that. So I wanted to build something that could help you f help you with fishing, but also not be like against the rules. So I looked around and found some designs for something that was actually really, really neat. And so that's what I'm gonna build. Um, basically, it's a fishing helper. Oh, I should probably build a way up. Oh, lily pads, that works. Um, it's a fishing helper. So like, it lets it it helps you um it helps you catch fish easier without having to time the like time the little jumpy things i need a crafting tip bench awesome without having to to time the like the particle jumpy thingies you can just like oh well, this that didn't make sense um can I make stairs? I want to get... I don't understand how blocks work. I'm having a momentary block out. <laughs> there we go. Alright, now you get out of here. So basically... Um, it's a thing that helps you... I'll, I'll, I'll show you when it's done. But... Um, you're gonna come in here and, and walk on down and it's gonna be right here. So I gotta do some some um some water clearing and stuff and then I'll uh I'll be back to show you exactly what's going on when it's when it's going on. So here's the basic concept, right? You've got um you go down here, you stand here, you throw out your rod. Oh no, you throw out your you throw out your lure, the door closes. And then you can just, while the door's closed, you can just hold down, right click, and nothing will happen. You'll just keep spamming right click until something bites your lure. That was perfect demonstration. At which point, the, um, the fish coming back will trigger the tripwire hook. And then it will um, open the door and let the fish, let you pull back the thing and let the fish um I don't know quite why it works I just know that it works um so like I was saying that most AFK fishing shacks kind of work in the sense that you like with the same sort of iron door mechanic where you close the door and then you hold right click on the door but it doesn't return your lure until a fish bites it which is great. Um, and that's like a super easy thing to do. I just don't like the automating of the whole process. The like having to... Basically how that works is it sets... You have to set like a script to click at a particular rate. It basically throws it out, reels it in, throws it out, reels it in, throws it out, reels it in. Essentially that's how it works. Ooh, oh, we got a saddle! I got a saddle! So that's the whole reason this is here. <laughs> that's the whole reason this is here. Because fishing is awesome, and you can get some really awesome things. But the timing of pulling the thing back is hard, so... That's kind of the idea. You don't... This eliminates the timing mechanism from it. It's just purely hold down until a fish bites, and then reel the fish in. So that's the idea. Now, it's a little... It's, um... It's not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, I gotta wait for another fish, and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. Not that you haven't didn't see it already with your eyes, but um, I can't believe I got a saddle. That was awesome. Unlike my third try here. Now, I, granted, I have I um, so it works. It works. It works quite nicely. So, granted, I have, I'm using a Luck of the Sea 3 fishing rod, um, which you can buy at Swordfish's Bait and Tackle. Come on down and get hooked. Come on down and get hooked. Get hooked. Bait, tackle, come on down, get hooked. 
get hooked. Come on down and get hooked. Anyway, so this isn't the like the prettiest thing in the world. I have a few ideas of what I want to do to make it a little nicer. Uh, I want it to kind of feel like you're underwater when you're down here, sort of like you're in a bubble. Maybe with glass, maybe not. I'm going to play around with a few things, uh, and then I'll come back and show you what I've ended up with. Okay, first things first, I decided that I wanted it to the tripwire hook to be attached to a tree. Why? Because I thought that would be cute. There's a tree at the end of the dock. You're going fishing, you're like, oh, I'm going to go on, you know, I'm going to have like a nice relaxing little fishing experience, you know, I'm just going to go hang out under the tree. I think that's kind of nice. I think it's nice and cute and fun. And over here, there's just a tree in the middle of the, in the, middle of the pond, lake, river, whatever this thing is. Oh, did a squid, I guess the squid is tri triggering my tripwire hook. Hopefully that doesn't affect it at all. Uh, it shouldn't. Because they're frolicking quite happily, and I don't want to interrupt their frolicking by murdering them. Anyway, so that's... I thought that was cute. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Hey, hey, they're closed. They're closed. Don't... Oh, come on. Here we are. Oh, yeah, I love... <laughs> I forgot how much I love the fact that signs just arbitrarily hold back water. Because it can make for some super cool stuff like this. So you stand here and you feel like you're in the lake. Because you are in the lake. Pretty much in every direction. And even here, you can see the, you know, you can see. It's so cool. So you can stand here and just cast it out and just stand and look around. Actually, you can't look around too much. You can't look around with your mouse cursor because it triggers the tripwire again. But you can look around with your eyes and look at the squid over there to the right. And there's a squid over there to the left, too. They're just playing. Just floating around, having a good time. There's another squid. He's uh, approaching my lure, but I don't think he's going to bite. And here we got a fish. We got a fish. And we got a fish. Awesome. So this works really well. I'm really excited about it. It actually works better on the server than it did in creative mode, on which is kind of funny. Um, so I open this up a little bit to kind of give it a, an, a very open feel. It's kind of like, really, the vibe I'm going for is that you're going down into the lake. You're going inside the lake to go fishing. And I really like that a lot. I think it's really, really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey! Stay out of my tripwire. Uh, but anyone, this is uh, free to use for anyone on the server. However, I strongly encourage you to use swordfish's bait and tackle fishing rods. However, not required. Strongly encouraged? Not required. I just think that fishing is such a cool... It's such a cool mechanic and a cool way to get rare things, especially like name tags and saddles and, and so on. So I, I really, I just want to make it easier for people to do it. Not have to worry about the, like, you don't have to pay attention when you're doing this, you know? Like, it's not AFK fishing, but it's sort of away from attention fishing. Like, you could watch a TV show and just hold down the mouse button. And then, you know, click again. You know, turn the volume down, hear the door opening and closing. Click, cast it out, hold it down, keep doing what you're doing. You don't have to focus on it. As much, because previously you had to watch the particles, and it's kind of slow and boring and, and not really that fun. So I think this is a much more, much simpler, faster, more efficient way to do it. Anyway, that's pretty clear. So I'm going to stop talking about that. I just caught a lily pad. That's interesting. Excuse me. That's interesting. I think that was probably on the surface, and there was a fish somewhere, too. Anyway. While I'm here using this, I want to just chat for a minute about some stuff. I hope you're enjoying my series, my, my current series. I um, I just wrapped up to the moon last week, and this week, tomorrow, because today this comes out on a Monday, so tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm starting a, a new series. It's a big mystery, and you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to come come on by the channel and check it out. But I'm also going to be doing another new series, kind of in quotes, in addition to that, um, that I wanted to talk about. 
So a few weeks ago, you may have seen me talking about it on Twitter, but I haven't really done much saying. Uh, I went to the Global Game Jam, which is sort of a, it's a weekend long worldwide hackathon for making games. So you starts on Friday at five, ends on Sunday at five. Did I just miss one? I think I did. It starts on Friday at five and ends on Sunday at five. And essentially what happens is you make a game in 48 hours from scratch. Um, and this year I've done it a bunch of years and I've always meant to do something about it on YouTube. And so this year I finally decided I'm going to do that. So I am planning to make a video one about my game, but two also about a bunch of other games that were created at the global game jam, uh, just to kind of show off the cool, interesting, sometimes innovative, sometimes pretty, sometimes fun, sometimes disaster, but it, you know, there's a, there's something there. Uh, the stuff that the people were creating at the Game Jam, because there's some really smart, really smart game designers making some really cool things, and I kind of want to showcase that. And that sort of shoehorns into the other thing that I'm planning on doing, um, which is a lot more really small indie games. So previously when I've done indie games, you know, I've done, like, Rogue Legacy and... Um, to the moon and like that kind of stuff, which are, you know, they're indie games for sure. They're not published. They're, you know, they're not published by anyone. They're pretty small digital release, but they've gotten some acclaim and, and notori notoriety or I wouldn't have heard of them. But New York, New York city in particular, has a really strong indie developer community and they have a lot of events and I've been kind of going and checking them out and, I am planning to do a lot of videos covering sort of the games that are coming out of New York. So in progress games or just released games or, you know, that kind of stuff. I want to showcase the developers and the designers and the people who are working on games in the New York area. So I've got and I've gotten in touch with a bunch of developers and have a bunch of things already queued up to showcase. And I'm going to be recording those pretty soon. I'm not sure what the release schedule is going to be like, but keep an eye out for one. Oh, I just got a fishing rod. Unbreaking three. Not bad. Um, but keep an eye out for those. I think that'll be really interesting to kind of take a look at, like, really so far unseen indie games. There's some really cool stuff that people are doing, and I think that you guys are going to be really interested. Or I hope you are, at least, because I think it's really cool. So that's my chat. Um, this fishing hut works. Oh, I works super well. I'm really, really happy about it. Um, this is so much better than fishing the normal way. Oh yeah. So everyone on the server, feel free to come on down to Swordfish's uh, dock. And oh, I gotta think of something. Anyway, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. I caught a squid. Watch out for the squid.